Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Benton. On this channel, I talk about stocks, investing, and finance, and I have $27,000 invested into Palantir. So today, we're going to be doing another video on Palantir. I'm wearing a hat today just because my hair is not cooperating, guys, and uh, I've got a lot of hair, as you can see, and today it's it's just not cooperating. It's just one of those days where it's deciding not to cooperate. This is not a good hat either. It's not my favorite hat, but uh, it's the only hat I could find, to be honest, so we're wearing a hat and that's how it's going. I hope you guys enjoy the hat. If you don't enjoy the hat, let me know. Let me know if you need my nice luscious hair while I do analysis on stocks. If you need to look at that, that's totally fine. But if you don't and you're fine with the hat because you love the content, the stuff I'm saying, the, the stuff that's coming out of my mouth, then uh, I hope you stick around. Okay, today, Palantir Data Protection. We're going to be talking about Palantir Data Protection and ultimately what it offers. Now, what inspired me to make this video outside of my relentless pursuit to understand even more about my investment and my due diligence on this company, um, is that Meet Kevin had a concern. Meet Kevin, for you guys who don't know, very popular. He has a million subscribers on YouTube, finance YouTuber, stock investing, all that stuff. And um, he did a video recently that said Palantir just like isn't good because they are privacy concerns. And I did a video reacting to that. I'll leave it in the description. Definitely check it out. Because I was just like... I was like so clustered and confused. I actually like Meet Kevin's advice. I trusted his advice. I trust his analysis. I understand what he says about stocks. So when he talked about Palantir, I took it very seriously because I have a lot of money invested in the company, not as much as him because that guy's just rich. But uh, I wanted to hear his concerns, right? And like he said that there were concerns. And his main argument, you guys can check it out more in that video, was that companies are not willing to give their data to Palantir because they're afraid of privacy. And like he started talking about how Apple is like big on privacy now because they created that app tracking data thing in apps where it asks you if you want to be tracked. And I just didn't get the analogy. I didn't think it made sense. I don't blame Kevin for that because he probably analyzes so many stocks that like this one went over his head, but I really didn't get the logic there. I was just like, what are you talking about? How, how are companies not trusting Palantir out of all companies with their data and data protection? Like that's one of the main reasons why Palantir is what it is today. So in this video, we're going to talk about a couple things. Number one, we're going to talk about what is Palantir's orientation and their sort of um, uh, basically like philosophy when it comes to data and data protection and data privacy. Uh, and number two, what does this mean for their business model? What does this mean for the trajectory of the company to ultimately increase in terms of its market size and its ability to acquire new customers? So let's talk about what it says on their website when it comes to data. At Palantir, we're committed to helping organizations protect privacy and strengthen trust in how they use information and achieve the potential of their digital transformation makes sense. Organizations use Palantir Foundry, their flagship innovation software or, or data analysis software, as their secure and accountable infrastructure to maximize the utility of their data while making sure that it's processed in accordance with the rules, regulations, and norms that govern data privacy. This is a really important thing because you've got places in Europe like... Uh, not places in Europe, but Europe that has countries that have GDPR regulations. GDPR regulations are sets of regulations that are really oriented around consumer safety and privacy. And any company, whether you're a social media company or any type of other technology company that integrates with um, data that you get get from your customers or your consumers, you need to be GDPR compliant. So Palantir is one of the very few software companies that exist, to be honest, that actually are able to optimize for data regulations, but still give you effective um, efficiencies within the analysis of the software. So they say around the world, Palantir is helping customers meet their compliance obligations in ever evolving regulatory environments. Among others, Palantir currently offers the following data protection modules for EU general data, GDPR, Brazil's, LGPD, California's Consumer Privacy Act, CCPA. There's so many. Virginia Consumer Act protection. Virginia has one? Why, why does Virginia have one? Like, why is Virginia so important? Okay, anyway, obviously they keep you intact with a lot of your data. Now, there's a couple of things here. They have data protection modules uh, that, that are operate in two ways. Number one is the data subject access request module. And number two is the right to be forgotten module. So the data subject access request module seeks to assist organizations with implementing Article 5 of GDPR, which is one of the flagship uh, regulation uh, the regulations that affect most of Europe and probably other places outside of it if you do any business in Europe, or comparable privacy regulations giving data subjects the right to obtain confirmation from the controller whether any data is being processed about them as well as access to basic information about that data. So when you use Foundry, it is compliant to the point where it lets the end consumer know that the data that is being transferred and keeps them up to date about how that data is being used. Second is right to be forgotten. This module seeks to assist organizations with Article 17 of the GDPR or comparable privacy regulations, giving data subjects the right to request erasure of data being processed about them, colloquially known as the right to be forgotten or the right to erasure. So their software integrates with companies that need to get rid of data or need to inform users about getting rid of their data at scale simply by sort of clicking a switch and then their data is ultimately forgotten. 
This matters for a couple of reasons. Number one, data protection is something that Palantir takes very seriously. And the reason for this is because they've worked with clients that you, if you don't protect their data, like th bad things can happen. These are uh, the government, the CIA, NIH, CDC, so pa FAA. Pa Pal Palantir has worked with some of the highest organizations of stature in terms of data cannot be leaked. Not only does data need to be analyzed, simulated, understood, created predictive models for all this stuff, but it can't be leaked. Like if it's leaked, you're talking about the entire company falls under because like that breach of privacy is different. If Facebook were to have a privacy breach, it doesn't really matter. No one really cares, right? Like, okay, your data got leaked, your like phone number, emails got leaked, hopefully some photos didn't get leaked. That's obviously, that would be bad. But like the reason I say no one cares is not, I'm not speaking from it ideologically, I'm speaking from it empirically. Like people historically have shown to just not care. They continue to use Facebook, right? They continue to use these platforms that have obviously had massive breaches of data, i.e. Cambridge Analytica, whistleblowers, et cetera, et cetera. So at that point, you're not talking about a company that's like Facebook. You're talking about a company that's protecting very confidential, sensitive data, data that companies can't have leaking because that data has to be synthesized in order for those companies to be able to save money based upon the synthesization of that data. And you've got governmental agencies that literally cannot have that data breached because then they could be under attack from terrorists if that data is re released, right? It's like very, very serious stuff. Um, and it's important to sort of understand uh, a lot of how those things operate. Now, this matters in the long-term trajectory of the company for a couple of reasons. Number one, when you're talking about a company that has the ability to manage data in a secure and private way, there's not a lot of companies that can do that. The companies that can do that, the oracles of the world, the sales forces of the world, they are multi-hundred billion dollar companies, right? So you're talking about... it. It's a very difficult thing to do when you're talking about using clientele's data and making sure that it's optimized from a business standpoint, but also safe from a consumer standpoint. If Palantir can become first in class and in terms of analyzing the data and being able to protect the data at scale, you've got something really special, right? You think about something like AWS, it was first in class in terms of being able to host data from a cloud computing perspective. If Palantir is able to analyze that data and keep it more secure than any other cloud computing service or... Um, ultimately any other organization that has access to your data, you're truly becoming a monopolistic type of uh, company. And this is a video I did on Peter Thiel's philosophy about Palantir uh, from going from zero to one, which is that competition is for losers. The whole thesis in that video, I'll link that in the description below as well, um, is all about this concept of like when you innovate a niche of a company within a certain uh, within a certain marketplace, if you're able to own that category in and of itself, then you ultimately have no competition, i.e. competition becomes for losers. If Palantir is one of the only companies that is really able to protect your data while at the same time analyzing it, and that's the big and, right? Because the analyzation of data is what you're paying Palantir for. The protection of the data is what continues to allow you to pay for them and you have peace of mind as a company because you know that your data is not going to go away. And you also know that the data that you're giving to the Foundry software is going to be integrated across all the other clients, which is only going to lead to network effects to make the data even better for you. You have to feel safe and secure in giving that data. If you don't feel safe and secure, this whole thing falls apart because the analyzation of the data doesn't matter if the data can't be protected. That, that becomes a first-in-class company that only Palantir has access to, right? You think about five, 10 years from now, if you think of the stock price, you know, it's at 20 bucks right now. You think of, and again, this is not financial advice, but you think of what is the trajectory of a $20 company that's a 40 billion market cap? Could that become a two, 300, you know, uh, dollar stock? And we're getting to six, $700 billion in market cap because it is the only software company, the most important software company in the world that is working with all these organizations to protect their data at scale, to make sense of their data at scale, and to protect consumer privacy at scale as consumer privacy becomes more and more regulated, a la the things that Apple's doing and a la GDPR right regulations. This also means that the concerns about Palantir not being able to get more clients or not being able to get more commercial revenue because of privacy concerns is just defunct to me, right? They are literally working with the military, right? I'm doing another video on Palantir's Gotham uh, software. That's a really good uh, reaction video to, to some of the content they have on their, on, their, on, their, um, on their website. And that shows you how intimate the software is integrated, uh, how intimately the software is integrated with the actual military and what the military does, right, when it comes to, like, stopping attacks and, like, trying to find things before they happen. Really, really interesting stuff. Not a lot of companies are trusted to be able to do this, and not a lot of companies have the access and the capacity to make sure that that trust is not breached in order to sustain long-term relationships with these types of clients. And when you're talking about the multi-billion dollar co uh, contracts that companies get from governments, it's because of historical figures like this. Um, so ultimately, that's why I think their data protection and their comprehensive approach to governance of that data is going to work out for them in the long term.
So those are my thoughts on Palantir and data protection. Let me know any thoughts you guys have in the comments, any ideas you have on how data protection can open up their market size over the next five, 10 years. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. This is Amit, The Daily Business Show. As always, I will see you on the next video.